My name is Andrea. I'm a certified asthma educator and I run an asthma home visit program. I also have allergies and asthma, as do all three of my children. Unfortunately, we didn't have a great gene pool. Um, today I want to talk to you about what it's like to have a child in the hospital with asthma, which happens despite how carefully that you have them treated and what you try to do to keep them out of the hospital. Sometimes it can happen. My younger two children were hospitalized 12 times due to asthma and pneumonia and uh, my son almost died twice. So we also had a little problem with the forest fire. So um, the most important thing is to stay on top of their allergies and their asthma and making sure that you're keeping their symptoms under control. If that means a trip back to the pediatrician, go back to the pediatrician. Even if you were there that morning, you feel like they're getting a little bit worse, go back to the pediatrician. Um, you're gonna wanna watch for some of the asthma warning signs. So you're gonna wanna watch for some shortness of breath, tightness in the chest, coughing. Sometimes their coloring will change a little bit and they'll go really, really pale or sort of a grayish color. Their fingernails can go have a little bit of a blue tinge or a purple tinge and then their lips can be really, really dark. Can look like they're wearing um, burgundy lipstick. Sometimes the kids will start to pant. And sometimes they'll flare their nostrils. Um, one of the things you also want to look for is called retraction, which is just a fancy word that means all the accessory muscles are pulling in and out with every breath. So the skin will pull in along their rib cage down here, and you'll see, you can see a rib, and then the skin will suck in, and then a rib, and the skin will suck in. Also, you can see retraction along the collarbone here, this little U-shaped notch, and the other side of the collarbone. The skin, you will see it suck in and out with every breath and sometimes it will suck in underneath their rib cage, so their little tummy will suck in really deep. So um, really important that you work out things ahead of time with your doctor and you have an asthma action plan. It has green, yellow, and red zones. He will tell you what to do if the kids are in the green zone, what to do if they're in the yellow zone, they start to have asthma symptoms, and when you need to go to the hospital. There are times when you can probably just go to the after hours. There are other times when you probably need to get in your car and either drive to the hospital quickly or else call an ambulance. Um, once you get to the hospital, uh, make sure that they understand that your child has asthma, they're having problems breathing, and then when you get to the triage, what they usually do will take the kids first or adults that are having a hard time breathing. If someone needs stitches or they have a broken arm and they need to have that cast, they're not going to stop breathing. My child will, and they need to get in right away. So it is a little bit scary, but hopefully you can prevent it from getting to that point in the first time, in the first place. But there may be times, no matter what you do as a parent at home, that you may feel you're in a little bit over your head and you need someone else to take over and you need the professionals to take over, and that's how I felt. We had our kids on their medication every morning and every night, their maintenance medication. They were on breathing treatments every four hours on the nebulizer. We had already been to the doctor. They were on steroids, the little prednisone pill to keep the swelling down in their lungs, and they, when they'd have pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia, they would also be on an antibiotic. I had all the medication timed out to the hour what they needed and still they were getting worse. So sometimes no matter what you do, they can still end up in the hospital. Yes, it can be scary for the kids as well as the adults, but remember sometimes that's the best place to have them treated. If you have insurance, the insurance will cover it. Respiratory therapists can take over, doctors can take over, the nurses can take over. You will get through it and you will get your child through it. Yes, it's scary, but you can do this as a parent. So until next time, I hope you have a great week and I'll be back to give you a little bit more information about being a mom of kids with asthma.